Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. Today I'm making a follow-up video on my Foam Iron Man video and I'm going to show you how I modified Pepecura templates for use with foam building. So I've got several pieces of the templates here, which are for Iron Man's helmet, which is our, um, the example I'm going to use to show you how I actually modified these templates. I've printed these straight off from Pepecura Designer. So I've got three pieces here that make up the, the major pieces of Iron Man's helmet. We've got there is the faceplate and the upper half of the faceplate that joins with it. So if we just grab the helmet, you can see that that piece would go on there. And that's the, the upper piece of that, which aligns with it. And the third piece I've got here is the back of the helmet, which fits on there. So, if you were to make these out of card and then you wanted to re spend ages reinforcing them with fiberglass, sanding and filling to make them smooth, then uh, basically you just make these out of card stock and you'd, and you'd put them all together with glue and then you'd do just that. You'd go and put bodge fiberglass on the inside and then spend a very long time sanding all the corners off. Obviously paper doesn't really bend in two directions at once without creasing and that's why they're full of all these slots. So I've just cut these out of paper just to show uh, how complicated they are. And that's any way that you can of course make the curve is by having, having lots of pieces that you have to join together and that makes a nice curved surface. So as I described in the first video, I didn't do that with the foam. Obviously the, the face plate and the other pieces are just one big piece of foam which I've basically bent the curve in with, by heating the foam and stretching it. So it's one continuous piece. There is a seam either side where the two pieces join together and obviously the back and the front are separate pieces. But the, uh, the main pieces are one big piece of foam each which are glued together and shaped with heat. So obviously what you need to do is modify these so they don't have all the slots in. But once you've bent the curve in with, with heat in the foam you can still put the pieces together and they all fit together. So what I did, there are some features in the software to do this, um, called join and disjoin faces, but with these pieces with the, the slots in that you have to cut out, it doesn't really work. So what I did was manually modify the templates on paper. So I've got the version here for the faceplate, which I've modified manually, and I've done that simply by cutting through all of these lines and cutting all the pieces in card and then basically filling filling up the gaps by shifting the pieces closer to each other to make one seamless piece. So that's the faceplate. You'll notice that the cheek pieces, which are separate here, there would be a crease in the paper. You can't crease foam like that, so I've basically detached that piece and made a separate piece which fits on there. So that's where we've got this rather sharp join between the two pieces so that is the piece of the cheek that fits there and obviously we need to make a cut to make a nice angular seam there so we've got the sharp seam which we wouldn't be to do just by bending the foam which is what you can do with paper. So I've done all of the pieces um, the other one I've got here is I'm going to show you, I'll just take the top of the head away for now is this one which is the uh, top of the face plate which I've done exactly the same thing these are just all of these strips were cut all the way through and then I've bunched them all up and that's all been taped together on the back just so I've got a template so those are the two pieces so what I've got here is the the lower piece of the face plate that I've already shown you which uh, I've actually already cut out the piece from foam there it is so that's just been simply cut round to make a foam piece and so now I'm just going to heat that on both sides and I'm going to use my knee as a jig to bend this into shape and I should be able to show you that you can curve that in both directions and that's how we made the piece. So this is, this is the hot air gun which I showed you in the last video. We'll just heat that piece on both sides. I'm 
going to use my knee and I'm going to bend that over. You can also push it out from the middle a little bit like that. Get that curve in, you can probably see it already taking shape. Let's just zoom in a bit. So that's already curved. I'll do that. Get it go on my knee again. But it basically seems to have uh, quite quickly taken the right shape. <clears throat> so that's come out as a nice curve to match Iron Man's face there. So that's basically the simplest way to make up the pieces. There we go. And then obviously if you wanted to attach the uh, piece of the cheek, we need to cut out another piece and make a nice angle so that they'd fit together to make up as I've shown you the uh, nice score that we've got there. So some pieces are a bit more complicated to do um, in that fashion. So this is the, the back of the head, which uh, it's got a lot of slits in it where they need the pieces need to come together and one big slit in the middle. So you could take the approach um, of modifying this template and just uh, kind of cutting it down the middle there and then overlapping those pieces so there's no gap. And then you have to do the same with all of these. So you basically literally have to cut all these lines all the way through and then once you've done them all kind of move these to closer together get rid of all the gaps and then cut that out of foam as one piece with no gaps and once you've done it then stretch stretch the curve back in like we did with the faceplate that's quite tricky and it's got quite a lot of um, of these gaps in and one running in the opposite direction. So you might end up with a piece that doesn't actually fit or it's the wrong shape, depending on how much you can stretch the foam. So there's another approach to this, just put that to one side, which is actually to make the piece in card. So there it is, the same piece, but with its uh, with the curve in. And again, I've just quickly assembled that. It's made of cardstock. I've just put some masking tape on the inside to hold it together. And then earlier on, I got a piece of foam and I which is much bigger and I stretched the a big curve in it already just in the same method as I did the face plate so what we can do of course is put this onto there just got a sellotape reel to support the middle we can put this onto the ready curved piece and then we can draw around the edge once it's on the foam because they both follow the same contour and then we could cut the foam out and then we could continue to bend the piece back in. The other method of course is just trial and error, cutting pieces off until it, until it fits the piece you're trying to make. Obviously with pieces like this it's sometimes easier to build the piece in card so that you can actually visualise what it is you're trying to make without um, trying to sort of blindly follow the template. Of course you could cut all the slots in and glue them together in the foam but it'd look quite messy because there's no real um, way of sanding and filling those. So I've got War Machine's um, right arm here, just the uh, lower arm, and I've also got the templates here, so that's uh, the piece that fits in there, and that's one of the other pieces, I think that, that fits on there. So when you print out the templates, they've got dotted lines on where there should be pieces that fold. Obviously with the foam, there's a piece of foam, you, you, know, you can't make that sort of fold, so you'd have to cut those to make a seam. So all of these um, lines that we've got here are, are all cuts. So you obviously need to modify the templates for that. As I said, there is a way to do it in Pepicura Designer to disjoin these faces, but basically I prefer to print them out in one piece so I can see how it fits together and how it would curve and then have a little think about how to make it in foam. So obviously in this case we do need to cut it, so then it's quite easy to just cut the card with a knife and, and you know then you can work out you need to make separate pieces and join them. So obviously to do that with foam, I'm just going to do a little example here with some foam, you need to have a steel ruler or something and you probably need to cut that at an angle to make, to make the angle where, where it joins together. So I'm just going to cut this foam in half with a knife on one side so that the edges are at an angle. Obviously if you want to join pieces together you could put a square edge next to an angle cut edge and glue them together and that will give you a slight bend 
or you could put two angle cut pieces together and that will give you an even sharper bend. So obviously uh, it's not too hard to work out what you need to do for this, we just needed to make sure that was cut so we could put the pieces of foam together at an angle to make the contour. Most of it's done by trial and error and if it's too much of an angle you've cut you can always glue the outer facing sides together and leave a gap on the inside and then you can just fill that with hot glue so there's um, a surprising amount of joins like that on the inside of my Iron Man suit where I basically sort of effectively welded them together with hot glue and done a zigzag line all the way across to uh, make sure they, they stay in position. You can also reinforce the inside with a piece of mounting board, some sort of thick card or some other sort of thick medium, possibly even a piece of wood or something like that. The other thing to remember for some of the pieces of Iron Man is of course if you do this in paper and you've got um, a step like we've got here between the two pieces you'd have to have a piece of paper on its side folded over but the foam that I'm using is 10 millimeters thick so there's no need to do that in fact to make this piece there's a piece underneath that um, so the top piece is overlapping the piece underneath so they're literally put together sort of like this to make the step you could of course make less of a step by gluing them end to end and only taking them so they overlap maybe by 5mm out of the 10mm and that will give you the step. So that's how I did some of the details on the chest piece and also the biceps. The other thing to remember is that you don't necessarily have to follow the templates exactly as they are. They are quite detailed because they're meant to be made out of paper. So you could just basically use your imagination. If you've got a tricky piece that's too fiddly to make you could just sort of stick a piece of foam there or you could just say it's too complicated and you could just approximate it by making the piece from scratch out of foam or card or something else. As I say you can use other materials um, I mentioned that the, the ears here were cast out of resin as I showed you in the last video so you could use any other household items, bits of plastic from an ice cream tub and all sorts of other things you don't have to stick to foam. That's pretty much all I've got to say about this this time as I said in the last video, there will be another video about moulding the pieces because I've made um, the rigid pieces which were moulded in silicon from the foam suit and cast in resin and also fibreglass, so I'll be talking about that next time. So that's all I have for now. Bye!